In an earlier version of our textbook, chapter 23 was actually called Avoid Apologizing. He has rephrased that chapter title into Recover from a Screw-Up. But his advice about avoiding apologizing still kind of stands. He's just more explaining what he means by it. He's not saying never say sorry. He is saying saying sorry by itself is not an appropriate way to recover from a screw-up or a mess-up. It's not... That's not the way to fix things. And so what he's trying to do is explain, if you mess up, here's how you can do it in a way that doesn't harm your ethos. So one of the steps that he recommends, and probably the first one chronologically, is be the first with the news. Don't wait to get caught, especially if you think there's a really good chance you're going to get caught. Ultimately, go ahead and come clean about whatever it is. And a lot of times this will be a workplace situation, but probably when you were a teenager, this would be more like, to your parents trying to decide do I keep this a secret and hope they don't know find out or do I go ahead and tell them he's saying probably go ahead and tell them um, you can find a way to do that that maybe sets the stage for it not being taken as badly he'll suggest something in chapter 10 called set a backfire which just basically means you build yourself up as already being super ashamed so that the other person doesn't want to make you feel worse uh, so we'll get into that again uh, in more detail later. Um, he does say, try not to just say sorry. Because sorry, kind of, especially if that's all you do is say you're sorry, it kind of demeans the other person. And you probably can think of a time that someone has said sorry to you and it didn't make it better. It might even have made it worse. <clears throat> He's saying that sort of instinct to say sorry and then act like that covers it is not an acceptable way to apologize, at least not as far as our ethos is concerned. And so what he says is instead of sorry, what you want to do is say, here's what I'm going to do to make it right. And or here's what I'm going to do to make sure it never happens again. So that is what he's calling switching to the future. So you want to switch to future tense. I messed up and that is all on me. Uh, there might be ways that you can kind of couch it in your ethos and talk about, you know, I was try trying so hard to do this that I didn't think about this. If that's possible, that's great. Uh, don't dwell too much on that because you don't want to be making excuses. You just want to be like, I messed up. Here's what I did. You can say I'm sorry. But as part of that, it needs to be, here's what I'm going to do to make this up to you. Or here's what I'm going to do to make sure that this never happens again. And then you stick to that plan. Now, if you mess up, but then you respond in this way, like you own the mistake um, <clears throat> and you have a plan to fix it in the future, that is a way to mess up without it damaging your ethos. And so that's why I included, I know I'm doing the chapters out of order. Uh, I include that chapter in this section because it is about your ethos. And eventually, someday, you're going to mess up. Um, and this has made me more attentive to things like... Um, when I, if I have messed up, uh, whether it's with a class and I've made a mistake with a student or forgot a deadline for something or whatever, a lot of times a first draft of an email, I'll say sorry, and then I delete that, and then I replace it with, this is what I should have done that I didn't do before, here's how I'm going to make this right. And that, I feel like, has served me well. And I also feel better about doing that than I do about just saying, sorry, I'm so sorry, I messed up, I'm so sorry. Um, it, it feels more proactive, but it also has a benefit in how other people see us. So that's, that's what he's getting at in Chapter 23.